Hi, we're here today with Susan Walsh. Susan, why don't you tell me a little bit about your background? Sure, um, my name is Susan Walsh. I'm an assistant professor at IUPUI. It's Indiana, Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. Um, I do my research in forensic DNA phenotyping. Uh, my background uh, is a master's in DNA profiling and a PhD in, in forensic genetics from the University of Erasmus in uh, Rotterdam. How did you get interested in phenotyping and the work that you're doing now? Well, we have a lot to do. Um, so I, I began with the idea that um, during my master's, actually it was, it was a funny story, I uh, was intrigued by a paper that had just recently come out that, that was on twins and it was investigating the, the quantitative trait of, of uh, eye colour actually in twins. And I thought it was fascinating, fascinating that we could actually be able to predict uh, what a, a person looks like from their genetic material because it made sense that you could um, and then just that whole area was, was intriguing and then a uh, few years went by and I kind of always knew that I wanted to get back into that and I, I came across Manfred Kaiser's lab and I was happy enough that he took me on and, and that's how I got back in there. But it's, it's science fiction to a degree, there may be traits that we will never be able to predict quite accurately or individualized prediction, but we can certainly do a, a good attempt. Um, and for pigmentation it's one of the easier traits to predict. Um, height is a little bit more difficult, so there are a lot of environmental factors there um, and now we are, are assessing what's uh, uh, possible with, with facial morphology. That's very interesting, yeah, that is, um, I assume facial morphology is very difficult because of the different points that you have. Mm -hmm. it, it's a complex trait, um, there are multiple processes that are, that are enabling the formation of the face and of course you've got differences between ethnicities, populations, so there's a lot to factor in but it's, it's really exciting. It's very exciting. I think you were on our a future forensics panel that we had this year at Ishii. Um, what was that like? Was Were there any um, themes, trends, or what does the future hold? The future holds a lot if you don't get ahead of yourself, right? <laughs> so there has to be some type of regulation, good scientific practice, um, I think, and that goes beyond my, my area of phenotyping. Um, if we can put in the, the work into scientific publications, establishing protocols, standardization, um, then yeah, the, the future is, is bright. That's very exciting. You had an NIJ grant, and I'm not sure if you're still working on that, or uh, where does that stand? So I had an NIJ grant on pigmentation, um, and now I currently have an NIJ grant on facial morphology. And so I will always continue to work. So you know, it's, it's great to get funding, and the support from NIJ has been phenomenal. Um, we continue to research, do research on pigmentation, and now with the addition of facial morphology, I have so much work to do. That's really exciting. How have you found the show so far? Great. Um, I, I like the... Um, the interaction with the students, it's great that they're getting exposed to, to um, research as well as the protect practitioner stories about how these things are being applied um, and that they can just walk up to any, any of, of the people there, the, maybe the, the head honchos and, and actually have a conversation with them, right? So they may not get a chance to do that at other places. I really do love the openness and the way everyone comes mm -hmm. together here. It's, it's wonderful to see. It's a great community, see. yeah. It really is. What's next for you? continue to do research. Um, yeah, I have so much to do. Uh, it's just so exciting to get up in the morning and, and to be able to do this research. Um, I'm very lucky and I work with some great, great people. Is there any advice you would give to anybody who's thinking about a career like yours? Um, perseverance. Uh, and, and there's a bit of luck in there too. Uh, you, can, you can do anything you put your mind to. Um, the doors opened up for me. It was, it, was, it was luck in a way, but I think that beyond, you know, top grades and everything, it's, it's uh, passion. If you have passion for an area, if you have passion for a topic, just go for it um, and you will shine and people will see you and that's how you get into it. That's wonderful. Let's also talk a little bit about practical applications and some of the things we read about in the media. Privacy, concerns in that area. Mm -hmm. So luckily for us, uh, um, phenotyping is an intelligence tool and at the moment we don't, um, it doesn't have the capacity for individualized predictions. So what we're generating are group traits such as do you have blue eyes or brown eyes. And so we're not actually getting down to the level of individualized prediction or identity profiling. So we're okay. Uh, it would be the equivalent of using CCTV cameras and, and pretty much that's everywhere these days. Thank you. Is there anything else about your work we haven't covered you'd like to talk about? Uh, no, um, I think, as I said, scientific validation is so important. Um, 
and just you know if there's any any group or, or state lab or local lab that has any questions about phenotyping please contact me contact Manfred Kaiser we, we are we are researchers but we can't do our job unless we speak with practitioners and to actually be able to work with practitioners is ideal because we'll make something that they want to use and vice versa they will use something that has been made for them so I think that communication is essential and I'd really like to to promote that idea that give me an email, let us work together on a case that you may have a cold case in, in, in your lab and I think generating a, a buzz about phenotyping that it's possible right now, um, for especially for pigmentation, um, that's, that's something I kind of want to push and, and get the United States uh, moving on phenotyping in, in, in cases. It's wonderful to see everybody internationally come together here and be able to share that information so it does work together in a larger sense. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we have to work together if we want to, to push the boundaries of science, right? Well, Susan, thank you so much for coming in. We really appreciate it, and I hope you come back. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Thanks, Winnie. Thank you.